the zombie. No, not that. Oh, hell no, definitely not that. Yes, that. The 1934 masterpiece by John the Beachcomber. Let's do this today on Adventures with Alchemy. Aloha and welcome friends. Welcome to Adventures with Alchemy. I am excited about this month. It's Tiki Month. Woo! Woo! Yay! Wow! Right! I am excited. I'm I'm jump man. What makes a Tiki Month? Tiki is so important to me. For one, uh, I bartend in a Tiki bar and I absolutely love it. It's been eight years and I'm still learning every day. So it is something that's very close to my heart. Tiki is just an important part of the history of bartending. It's instrumental. It's uh, it's got uh, it's craft bartending. So there's a lot of uh, fresh ingredients. There's a lot of uh, handmade syrups and techniques that were introduced that had not been seen in this country before. So to get started with Tiki Month, we have to start with the zombie. The zombie is one of the most important cocktails, in not, if not the most important cocktail, next to the mai tai, in all of Tiki. It's the one that started it all. Don the Beachcomber, 1934. So we have to start with the zombie. So let's begin by talking about Don a little bit, okay? Ernest Raymond Beaumont Gant, as we know him, Don the Beachcomber. Give you a quick rendition. This gentleman left the country during Prohibition. He traveled the world. He learned skills uh, and different ingredients and techniques and syrups and then he brought him back home and started the first tiki bar, the first on the beach comers. And with it, he created a cocktail called the zombie. Now, the zombie was special for many reasons. Number one, it was a pretty drink that appealed to men who in that time, and even to this day, drink, don't, you know, they see a colorful cocktail and they automatically think, ah, too sweet, no, not for me. So it kind of, made it okay because it was a powerful drink. It challenged you by saying things like, oh, you can't drink more than two, we won't allow it. Or, you know, can you drink more than one? So it was things like that that was the marketing ploy for it and it worked. People fed into it. So um, you had people that were trying something because they felt challenged. Now suddenly they're introduced into a world of, of cocktails and Polynesian pop and it blew their mind and it caught on like wildfire. This cocktail is a combination of many ingredients. I can only imagine what Don was doing sitting around when he created this, uh, but it is a masterpiece of a cocktail. And I feel privileged and honored to be able to make it for you here today on the show. Now, I don't have the exact rums that Don used, but I am gonna use the styles in which are written in uh, Beach Bum Berry's book. Of course, many of us know about Jeff the Beach Bum Berry, who tracked down um, Don's work and uh, through different retired bartenders and notebooks and such, decoded them. And that's how we know these recipes today. So shout out to uh, Jeff Beach Bum Berry, Latitude 29. My hat's off to you, sir. So let's begin. We have Angostura bitters. We have absinthe, aged Puerto Rican, eight-year-old Bacardi. This is a plantation dark rum. Now this isn't a Jamaican dark rum. Uh, the only Jamaican dark rum I have is Caruba, and I know how some people feel like Caruba may not be good enough for this particular thing. I, I, this is a good dark rum, so you know, enjoy, please. Don't crucify me in the comments. And of course, a 151 Demerara rum. And then we have homemade grenadine. Here we have falernum, also homemade. We have fresh squeezed lime juice, and we have Don's Mix. Very important, Don's Mix is a two to one ratio of white grapefruit juice with cinnamon syrup. Now, I just took some fresh grapefruits and just squeezed them and um, passed it through a chinois and then I, I added my cinnamon syrup. And then of course we have our garnish, which is a fresh sprig of mint. I have it right here. Keep it in a wet paper towel so it stays nice and fresh and springy. 
and we are going to start making the cocktail now, okay? Let's do this. So let's begin with our non-alcoholic ingredients. So if we make a mistake, we're not throwing away alcohol, okay? Let's start with our Don's mix. We're gonna do half an ounce of Don's mix. And we're gonna go straight into the blender because we're flash blending this. And you go three quarters of an ounce of lime juice, 0.75. Next we're gonna do a half an ounce of falernum. Next we're gonna do a teaspoon of grenadine. Next we're gonna do our bitters. Do two dashes. I like three or four. Six drops of absinthe. If you don't have absinthe, you can use Pernod. Herb Saint is also a way to go. Six drops. You do not want to go crazy with absinthe. It will, it is a very powerful flavor. Okay, let's move on to our alcohol now, okay? Hooray! So, Puerto Rican rum, aged rum, one and a half ounces. Dark rum, one and a half ounces. One fifty one Demerara. One ounce. Can you see why they wouldn't serve a customer more than two? So here we have our Lewis bag with crushed ice. If you don't have a crushed ice machine, get yourself a, a bag of some sort or a couple towels and take a mallet. Yeah. Now, I was saying about four to six ounces depending on the crushed ice you have. Because ice is different depending on what you're using. In this case, with the ice I am using, it's about a little less than a cup. So I don't know if you could see that, but it's about that much. You could see it here. Right here. See? So there shouldn't be enough ice to be coming out. It should still be in the liquid. And at this point, we want to move kind of fast because we want do not want to overwater our drink. Four to five seconds is all you need. So once your drink is blended and ready to go, again, it should just be a flash blend. Shouldn't be like, you know, like a slushy, where you're gonna get your favorite, get your favorite zombie mug. Yeah. Go ahead and pour the goodness in there. We're gonna top it off with some crushed ice. So you take your mint sprig, you put it in the palm of your hand, and you give it a good smack. This opens up the mint. Now imagine that each leaf of mint has like an organic coating of wax over it. And when you smack it, you're cracking that coating of organic wax. And so when you crack it, it opens up all that goodness that's inside. And that's why you can smell that mint, why it's so aromatic. So we're gonna put this nice, wonderful mint into this, I have I already took the liberty of um, taking some um, some grapefruit, a grapefruit peel, and we're gonna put this bad boy in here, and we're gonna make our little mint sprig holder, right? And we're gonna put him right there, nice and happy. So there you have it, the 1934 Don the Beachcomber Zombie. Uh, take your time, have fun, make this drink to the spec, or it will not be the same. Either way, aloha, mahalo, and cheers. Let's begin with our spam masubi. So, we have our spam. We have our uh, short grain sticky rice. And then of course we have our nori. Cut it into strips. Get a little bit of water here so that we can wrap the nori and stick it. So. Take your spam, open it up. You're gonna wanna save the can for later. Uh, we're gonna use that to um, make our rice mold. 
put the spam on a dry piece of paper towel and then pat it down to get all that spam slime off. Oh yeah, spam slime, delicious. And yeah, I'm gonna speed it up a little bit. Cut it up, put it on a nice hot pan. Make sure you preheat your pan before you start. Get into a nice golden brown delicious. I wanna get some color on those. Also known as the Maillard reaction, the browning of sugars over heat and proteins. Next, I'm gonna take our spam, which is nice and cooked, sear it on both sides. Put it on a nice paper towel so we can get those drippings off of there. Next, we're gonna take our can and you're gonna line it with saran wrap. And you're gonna take some rice, about a handful, and stuff it in there. I did way too much rice in this, so about half a mile of rice as I did here. I figured the mold was already done and I wasn't gonna mess it up. So there you have it. That's your spam mold. Right? So get that down. At this point you want to start warming up your sauce. And I just like using a little bit of teriyaki with brown sugar and toasted uh, toasted sesame seeds. So get your plate, lay down your rice, add your spam on top. Remember about half this much rice. That's a lot of rice. Get your sauce going, get your nori. Go ahead and wrap it. What you wanna do is you wanna seal it when you get to the bottom. Just dip your fingers in that water and then just seal it right there. Lay it down. Center your plate so it looks pretty. Make sure your sauce is nice and hot, ready to go. And then just drizzle it over the top. You wanna to just cover the spam. Pretty much glaze the spam with it. And of course, if you're like me, you gotta have sriracha. Just a little bit of spice makes everything nice. Spam makes me happy. Yay, happy. There you go, I know, not the prettiest. Maybe if you wanna add a little green to it to give it a little color, but I love my Spam Musubi with sriracha. It's delicious. Goes perfect with a zombie.